Hi, you guys. Wow, that's really loud. All right, this is the deal. I've been an artist and an inventor for 30 years. So when you saw things like the dripless zipper cuff or three-wheel strollers and you know cars, motorcycles, let me let me switch this over so you get. There's some of my stuff. I've been a, a builder for over 30 years of just about anything. And when 3D systems came in and 3D modeling came in about, I'd say about 15 years ago is when I started the process. And up until then, uh, I would have to be a machinist. I would have to be you know, uh, a guy that could uh, build anything out of my mind and use all the tools and the skill sets it took to build. Right now, where this world is going, it's kind of like everybody gets to cheat right now in a weird sort of way. I feel like I've got a great skill set that goes back and I've paid my dues and been an apprentice and you know, blah, blah, blah. And right now you get to skip to the front of the line because the bottom line is when you do 3D modeling and, and, um, and printing like you do right now, it takes you to another level. It's kind of like you'll never be as strong as Iron Man, but you put the suit on and you are just like bad ass. Well, that's what this, all this stuff, all these cubes of stuff makes you have that kind of horsepower. And if you know how to build something in your mind and you say you can't transfer it, there's very few people that can do that and have the shop and the years to create and collect all the things you need to build. But right now, you could literally take this little square box and put it next to your bed, build something, wake up in the morning, and you have it in your hand. That's, that doesn't even make sense. You know, it's just crazy. And the fact that you can buy it and do it at the prices you can now, it's like a whole new, it, it's, it's crazy. It just kind of blows my mind. So I'm gonna kind of take you through a little bit of kind of where, I guess where I am, that when you have something like freeform modeling, I, I, everybody hears the word CAD and gets a little scared and bumpy and nervous about using it and rightly so i was really super scared because i'm an artist at hand you know here's some of my fine art uh let's switch over to um freeform gives you the ability to think of an idea say say this right here see if i I've, here's this little unicycle thing i live and breathe on this because i love the technology and how it works but i hate the way it looks so you know, with, with modeling, you can change your shape, you can change your thought, um, and you could, build, you could build things you can't build in engineering without a skill set that's 30 years old. Kind of like, if I had to make this in real life and try and machine that out of a block or vacuum form it out of a sheet, it, you're talking about so much work, so much time, and so much energy, and to be able to sit down at night with a cup of coffee, sit there and watch it come to life and actually spin it and build it, load it into a machine like this and wake up in the morning and it's sitting there is just crazy. It does, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. The, um, and the ability to have parts fit, hold on, let me do this. Let me do this one. It's got too much paint on it. It's trying to make it pretty for you. There it is. That's insane. You know, the kind of fit that you get on something that you don't need to be the machinist is, um, I don't know, it, it, it blows my mind. Um, the other thing about it is you also need a drawing if you're starting with an idea. And I've been an illustrator for a long time. And if you got a thought, you need to be able to transfer that thought from your mind to someone else. And in order to do that, you need a skill set. And fortunately, when you're using um, a, a, a product like Freeform Modeling, you don't necessarily need to be an artist. You can kind of start capturing thoughts. If I wanted to take this bottle and say, I want to make this bottle. Now, I don't, I don't think anybody here needs to be an artist to be able to you know, say, OK, this is you know, you know, 2.35, and this is you know, 1.15. You could just sit there and measure things, start drawing a line, and all of a sudden it starts building itself in front of you. And there's a lot of guys out there. I, I don't know who knows CAD out here. This little, your CAD, your CAD. I mean, that that's like 
three people out of all you guys. And all you people that don't do the CAD, you get scared of it. And if you're an older guy like me, and there's a lot of old guys like me that have the skill set, and what they do is they will hire a young guy to come in and build for them because they're afraid of the computer. And that makes me so sad because the bottom line is you have a lifetime of skill built up inside of you that you've been learning and building and creating and you know what a thickness is, you know how, how draft works, how all these wonderful things, but you're gonna take that knowledge that you have and you're gonna say to some guy that has never built anything, I want you to draw me this and build it in CAD. Now, you gotta get your head around just learning it. It's not difficult to learn. It, you just sit down and start with an easy shape. And you know, there was a guy that kind of inspired me. I did stuff for Hot Wheels and Mattel. And I was nervous about CAD, like super nervous. And he said, listen, Scotty, what you need to do is take one tool, two tools, three tools, and use them well. Forget everything you see in there. You know, it, it's like, you know, it's like opening a dictionary and looking at all of these words, like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna learn this. Well, you know what? I only need a few things. Eat, food, sit. I can, I can do anything you know, with that. And, and that's really what it is like building a CAD. You, you gotta think of the tools in there as if, um, if they're tools out of your house, like uh, I've got a table saw, I've got, you know, I've got a drill. So all of a sudden you'll think of extrude as a drill. Okay, I'm gonna punch a hole. And all of a sudden you have three tools and you just start taking them. And as you go, you're gonna add other ones, but you'll build, oh my gosh, you'll build to a level that you won't, you won't even believe, but you'll have, you'll have the ability to see things that if you try to tell somebody how to build what you want, the best part is gonna be missed. I'm trying to think how I can get this across to you guys. This is really, 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 really important. Um, if somebody had an idea out there, and like I said, I've been an inventor a long time. If you have an idea and you're trying to tell somebody how to make the model for you, this is what happens. You go to a shop, the guy in the shop will take whatever drawing you do, however you explain it, and he's gonna go, yeah, I can build that for you. Yep, no problem, yeah. How thick you want it? How big? Yep, okay, that's what we'll do. And he'll build it. Well, when he's building it, this is what happens that you guys all miss. When he's building it, he'll go right in the middle of the build. He'll look at it and go, well, you know what that guy should have done? Should have made this a little bigger. That looks small. That's what he wanted. That's what we're building. Here you go, man. Here's your part. Came out perfect. You missed the, the, the golden thing, the, the, the gem, the thing that was missed, you weren't there for. You couldn't do it because you never would see it, and he won't tell you. So I can't, you know, if you get anything out of me, anything, just remember, you're going to miss things if you don't learn how to do this. And, and, and please don't look at these programs as somebody, you've got to hire somebody that's learned it. Learn it yourself. It's not hard to do. It's life changing. To think in, I think in my mind this. I could make anything. Can, is, is there anybody out there that feels in their soul that you could build anything? That I can say, can you make me anything I tell you? Can you just build it right now? There's not a lot of you, but I really believe in my heart of hearts, down in my soul of you. Scotty, can you make me this? Yeah, I can build you that. It's gonna be badass too when I'm done. And I don't even know what it's gonna be. It's just the fact that I'm gonna get in the middle of this thing, I'm gonna start building it, and I'm gonna be the guy that finds the magic trick. I'm gonna go to the guys go like, oh my God, that thing should be bigger. Oh yeah, that would've been awesome. And so that, man, you know, whatever you get out of this whole show, Please, please go home with, you know, learn this because your mind's only going to see what it sees and, and you're going to compromise your business. It, it's everything. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to jump off of that because I, I get all wound up about it. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to go over to here. All right. Here's, the, here's one of the other biggest, biggest things of being able to do 3D printing. Uh, years ago, I would build a lot of models, a lot of stuff for the infant products. So, strollers and play yards and bouncers and uh, all that stuff. And a lot of that stuff is pretty big. 
So if I was to uh, build, say, a play yard for a kid, and it all's got to open up, I would go and I would machine all of those parts out of billet, or I would machine them out of Delrin, or whatever was available, and then I would go and show the part. Now, to show the part, to go to a meeting, I'm in San Diego, if I flew to New York to go meet with Fisher Price or whatever, um, I've got this big box that I've got to send. Well, I don't want to send it because it's a model, it's a prototype, it's something that I've got so much money and time into, I'm afraid to ship it, so to take it on the plane. When I get to the plane, the plane goes, it's too big, we're gonna have to charge you 600 bucks to put that in the plane, okay? And then when I get to the airport, the airport, the, the car, uh, the uh, cab goes, I can't put it in my car, it's too big. Okay, and then it's, it is a shit storm from the, the time you get the build till you get in the meeting. And here's where it goes bad. You get in the meeting, I've got this big box now. Everybody's excited. I don't want to bring it out because I wanted to sh surprise everybody with how cool what I built is. So then I start taking it out, which is full of packing. And I got this big mess in there and I grab out this thing and I want to put it on the table because it's full of people. And I go to put it on the table. It's like, well, it's too big. Put it over there in the corner. So now I'm in the corner trying to tell them how great this product is. And people are over here going like this, going, oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, it's awful, awful. So then when I got involved with 3D modeling, this is the magic that came out of it. I would build the beautiful big part. I would render it. That's the other thing. The rendering packages are huge. It looks like it's been done and finished. It looks like a photograph. So I go there with the renderings. And then out of my bag, I pull out this quarter scale model that is exactly the product. And really, really listen to what I'm saying because this is what makes you money. You know, all this stuff is cool. You're not gonna make spatulas and roller skates out of this stuff. You're gonna make things that make you money. And when you go into a meeting and you pull out this motorcycle, let's just say, I say I have a file for that entire bike. I could literally push a button that says quarter scale, and it will make every one of those parts quarter scale. So think of the power of that is. Now I have that entire motorcycle, and it's this big. So now I go into the meeting and I go, and that's what I'm talking about building everybody, one of these. Now, they're not over here looking over there. They're all touching it, and it's going down the line, and they're all going, wow, and this is where it gets magic. They'll, they'll pull a little, they're gonna pull this lever. They're gonna go, oh my God, that works. Well, actually, it's easier if it does work because I pushed quarter scale. So they don't know that. So the bottom line is everything functions. Now it's like a magic trick. This is the coolest thing in the world to them. They almost want to buy it because they love it. It's little. It's like having a, I don't know, what is it? It's like a, it's a big thing that's little and everything works and moves and it's unbelievable. And then here's where it even gets better. If I had the big model, they don't know what to do with that. They don't do what to do with the packing or the box or all the junk in that mess in there. And they say, well, we'll have our people take that and put that in the back so no one sees it because you don't want anybody to see it. You don't want anybody's eyes on what you're doing because this is a product. You know, it's confidential. The little one, the guy says, I'm going to take this to my office. He takes it, the, the owner takes it to his office and he keeps it with him. That's how you make money. That's how you sell stuff. So whether these products are the strongest plastic in the world, doesn't really matter. If you're using this tool as a tool and you want to sell stuff and you want to sell product and you want to take your ideas and take them to, you know, another universe, this is, this is the deal. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, like I said earlier, it's kind of like cheating. You know, it really, really is. You know, you can talk to an uh, you know, an old machinist, an old soul who would build this in aluminum and say, you know what, I gotta, I gotta build a fixture, I gotta do this, I don't have a mill end that's gonna go in there, I can't go to that point, can't do the undercut. He, he has all these can't, can't, can'ts. When you do this, there's no can'ts at all. I've erased every negative possible. Build whatever you can think of, even if it's unbuildable. When you get done, you can build it in that machine. And then a machinist will look at it and go, you know, we're going to have to change a few things, but wow, that's amazing. And, you know, that's, that's the horsepower of what is here. It is, it is, I mean, I wish I could, I wish I could just drive this down your guys' heads, how 
insanely big this is. This is just such a baby step, what everybody is doing here, and this is the beginning of a, a huge, huge, huge wave, like a giant wave. Um, let me see where else am I at. Here's quarter scale. It, oh, yeah, there it is. Let me go back. Here's quarter scale. This is a just just this little potty horse guy thing. But that guy is about he's about this big. He's he's pain. Hate taking him anywhere. The little baby one. He's this big. Does everything that one does exactly the same. Push the button. Quarter scale. Boom. Out it comes. So it's super super fun. The other thing with um, um, free form is the fact that. You can do organic shapes. I, if you guys get into CAD or any of that kind of jazz, you know, I'm not banging on um, SolidWorks or anything like that, but it's a very, let's say, very linear, linear life. You know, it's everything's kind of straight. You can do shapes, but it's gonna, it, you're gonna, you're gonna earn it. You know, you're gonna, it's really difficult. The one beautiful thing about using uh, Freeform is the fact that um, it's very organic and it's like taking a big blob of clay and it's like, you know, I really don't like the way that looks. And you could grab a tool and take it and stretch it and move it to here and go, wow, that looks amazing, and sit safe. And it's a real thing, a real part in real time, which is, uh, I can't even tell you how powerful that is. That's, that's crazy. And if you're doing a, like a little product like this, to do that in a normal CAD system would be very, very, very difficult. But to be able to do it in free form and be able to um, you know, sculpt a little, a little guy, but at the same time do a gear in the same program, you know, that everything meshes together. It's like this motorcycle, you know, you could literally, you know, draw that entire bike, but if I wanted to create a beautiful person that was riding that motorcycle, I could do the same thing in that same program and they'd be like, holy crap, all done in one shot, they even built the person, which is really, really, really fun. Um, Here's a little more with, you know, you could go down into, here's the jewelry road, um, being able to create in waxes, then you can cast. There's, I guess it comes down to, there is like zero, zero limit to whatever you can do. It's just having the ability to build anything. And I can't, I just, I can't stress that enough. Build anything that you can think of. It's such a powerful thought. It's, it's, it drives me out of my mind, but, um, that's pretty much what Freeform is. Anybody got any uh, thoughts?